Okay, we're going to move on. The next question is from Frankie. He says, what are your thoughts about or thoughts on AI generated content with stuff like GPT-3 and phrase.io? Do you think these would be good for money sites or could they become toxic from an SEO angle? Hey, listen, this is my opinion, but if you can read, I mean, if it spits out really you know, good readable content, then I don't know how that could be toxic from an SEO standpoint. In fact, uh, I've actually seen some demonstrations of some of these, AI, not, not most of the time they, they need editing, right? They'll spit out content that still has to be worked a bit, right? Massaged a bit. But um, I've seen s- some, you know, shorter snippets that just read incredibly well that read better than a lot of the times which you'll get from writers. <laughs> so uh, I think, I think there's a real opportunity with those. Um, I haven't really found any that have been, um, that still didn't need quite a bit of massaging once the, 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 you know, the output, um, the, the final document was outputted, but, um, I've, I've seen where they, they, it's getting better. So anybody want to comment on that? Oh, you betcha. Go for it though, Marco. <laughs> no, it's all, it's entity-based wordless SEO, right? It's, it's, it's entities being able to pick out the entities. People have the wrong concept of AI and, and readable, right? Like, human readable between and machine readable what the machine wants versus what a human would want because you could you could create two different sets of content and one worked perfectly well for the bot and you get ranked and it's not going to convert anything i mean we saw the, the, the kyle roof example well he ranked laura mipson content and he just had the right keywords in the right place and that works perfectly well for the bot but I can bet you that nobody is ever going to click on anything that they don't understand. Well, they could. It depends. It depends how well you do with your CPA. But that person has to have a reason to click. That person has to have a reason to give you money, to, to give you something in exchange for what you're giving them. If you're giving them nothing, you get nothing. It's, 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 it's a rule in our game. You give someone nothing, and they're not going to give you anything. You give someone value, and they're going to continue giving you whatever it is that you're expecting to get. Having, having said that, you, I've used both, and, it, and they both work really well, especially out of tier two, tier three. I mean, just go to town with it. Now, I know Adam has, has his take on it, because he's playing in a, in a website that won't let me in. It won't let me in. I don't know why. I keep using different emails, different things, different IPs. I'm going VPNs. I'm going to different servers. I'm going all over the world trying to log, log into this place. They won't let me in. Yeah, this stuff is uh, my bread. I love this stuff. Um, but to, to stick to the question, you know, what are your thoughts on AI generated content and stuff like GPT-3 and Phrase? Do you think these could be good? Yeah, so let's start with the long view. If I, Adam Moody, write an article, I'm big into productivity. If I write an article on the top three tips for productivity and you don't know that I wrote that and then we go and get GPT-3 and we give it a prompt of write top three and we blindly give you those, and they both are helpful, does it matter who wrote it? You know, it doesn't. And so I definitely take the user, the human user approach to this, like Marco was talking about. I'm not gonna tell you whether or not it's toxic because I don't see any way that it could be. Um, yeah, and I just, but I'm not gonna tell you that technically cause I don't know, but I look at this as in the end run, it doesn't matter who wrote it so long as the information is usable, usable and there's value in it. I agree. Let me, let me tell you how we boil it down. If you get art into that content, activity, relevant, trust and authority, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether a human wrote it. It doesn't matter if it's someone else's content. It doesn't matter if it's spun content. It doesn't matter if it's hard to read. It doesn't matter if the the page takes an hour to load. If you get that art in there, everything is off the table because Google is going to love your content because the people who are visiting your content are telling Google that they love your content. Your content gets shared. Your content gets liked. Your content gets quoted. All of these things happen. Activity, relevance, trust, and authority. People are giving you their email. They're calling you, whatever it is that, that you've set for them as a goal. We talk about this all the time. How important it is to get that final conversion so you get that final signal to Google. And that's money, guys. That's what you look at. It's money in your pocket but it's also going to mean more Google love because they're going to send more people to see how well they like it. And then it just, it just builds on itself. It becomes a snowball effect. 
I see it in, in, in Google My Business when we're doing posts. I see it time and again. It starts slowly. Google starts giving you these displays. And then you start getting more views. And then you start getting phone calls. And then all of this relevance that, that you're getting and all of this activity, all of this trust and authority, it gets a snowball effect to where you see that hockey stick. You get that hockey stick and you get it for your website visits, for your phone calls, for your requests for directions, for everything that you could possibly want. But the caveat here is that whatever content you're using, the only way that it can be toxic is if nobody interacts with it. If you can't get anyone to interact with it, the toxicity is not because of the content. It's because there's no interaction. There's no art. Yeah, Bradley, can you let me share my screen real quick? Yeah, I got something I was going to share too, but go ahead. Uh, how do I do that? I think you just have to stop sharing. Uh, okay, I'll try that and see if that works. Can you share now? There we go. All right. Um, so I wanted to share this because I want to talk to the second part real quick and talk a little bit on the actual kind of actionable side of this. Um, I talked about this in the mastermind. I'm not going to share all the slides, but uh, in November, I went over some of this stuff and kind of the tools that are being used. So the second part of the question for Frankie was, you know, he's interested as many spinners and auto blogs are popping up around these types. Would love your thoughts on these technologies and auto blogging in general. So I think Bradley and Marco uh, both touched on this that, you know, that, you know, yeah, it's out there. You could use it. What I will tell you right now is that I would not, I have seen nothing that I would want to have on any site that I have my name attached to. And that I would not, or rather that I would just put up there without me seeing or having a professional right. editor touch first. And that's just the, how I see it, where we're at. I'm not saying it can't be used elsewhere. I'm not saying somebody else wouldn't be okay with it. I wouldn't do that if my name was attached to it or it was associated with me. What I have seen so far is a lot of these tools are awesome, awesome, awesome at coming up with short snippets. So in the e-commerce world, coming up with product descriptions, I've had a, a bot write better product descriptions than what I could come up with for my own products. It's insane. So like short snippets, stuff like that, ideas, um, phrase particularly, and then some other tools like Market Muse, uh, coming up with content briefs, right? And that's less AI and more machine learning and saying, hey, we can go and scrape all the data real quick for a search term. We can identify, here's what the keyword patterns look like. Here's common headers, here's common topics, here's the questions that pop up. And that can give you a brief to go get that written. Uh, and so, or to write it yourself and save you a lot of times. Uh, and so you could incorporate AI into that. I know Market Muse, for example, you can get the content brief and then have their AI write it. But I think you could at this point still probably get better content, just taking a content brief and giving it someone like at Word Agents or um, one of these other kind of writing services, and then maybe doing some work on it on the back end. Um, but that's kind of roughly where we're at or is how I see it right now. Is that going to change in the future? Hell yes. And if you do copywriting, I personally wouldn't be aiming myself to be like, I'm going the quantity route. I would be looking at quality, uh, long-term, how you can add value onto the writing because, you know, I wouldn't want to be the person that's writing e-commerce descriptions right now because your job's going to disappear in about a year or two. I want to be the person who's working with clients and strategizing with them and helping them with their copy, things like that. Um, and I just got to tout this real quick. If you're into AI, if you're into this sort of stuff, go check out this book. It's a blast to read. It's really crazy. It's written by a physicist uh, who dives into this stuff. It's called Life 3.0 tons of fun and just talks uh, about this stuff more in depth, but where the rubber meets the road, it's, I don't consider it good enough, these tools yet to be just cranking out the copy for my sites, but you know, the devil's in the details, test them out, see for yourself and kind of go from there. Hey, that book is a classic. It was written in 2017 <laughs> yeah. on AI. It's a, it's gotta be on the classic list now. Yeah, it's great. Well, it's good. It's the more that the, I will definitely say more on the theory side and just saying like, Hey, let's look forward. What kind of stuff is going to happen? They've got a great section I think I forget if it was a title, but it's like, what should, you know, I tell my kids to be doing as far as their jobs. And it's like, well, you probably don't want to teach them how to do repetitive tasks. You want to teach them how to interact with people. So, yeah. One more thing. I, I pulled this up when I saw the question earlier, you got to check out Google's natural language API yeah. demo. Um, it's their cloud natural language. And it's really cool. You can just copy text, you know, and just play around with this and, and you can paste text into there and click analyze. And it'll come back and it'll identify entities and it will show you the sentiment of the of the, the text. So it'll show you whether it's positive sentiment, net neutral or negative, uh, that kind of stuff. 
you can get a lot of really good ideas um, on how to optimize content just from using their natural language API demo. In fact, I, I, I just, you know, I'd seen this before, but I just saw a great video from Ed Leak, who is a uh, Google Ads guy. Uh, he's, I think he's in, in the UK, um, but he, he just published a, a you know, I'm on his email list and I got an email from him, I think yesterday or a couple of days ago. And he was talking about a great way to uh, increase your ad relevancy, your, your ad relevance score inside of Google ads for, for search ads. And he was, he demonstrated using this. He said, just go do your top level keyword search or whatever keywords that, uh, that you're, you know, you're, you're running ads for go do some keyword searches and then just copy the text from the ads and go use this tool to paste them in. And you can start to identify common entities that are referenced as well as the sentiment, like the, the phrases or the, uh, the, the terms and phrases that are used that for positive sentiment and things like that. And you can build kind of like a nice little cheat sheet or a little database of uh, you know, the, the, what Google determines are relevant to those keywords so that you can include those in your Google ad copy so that you can increase your ad relevance score. Um, so I thought that was a really, really cool hack that I had never thought. I've always uh, struggled with ad relevancy. And, and the only way that I, you know, cause sometimes they're just, you just get low, um, uh, below average scores on ad relevancy for some reason or another. And the only way I've ever been able to remedy that is through testing, like through trial and error. And sometimes that's a, that's a long, uh, a long process. And he showed a very quick way to use the natural language API demo. And I think this could apply to what it is that you're asking about for content and such. Mark, do you have any comments on this? I know you, yeah, we, sh we show that we show that in the heavy hitter on how, I mean, what, one of our webinars is how you take that and use that in combination with all the other different tools of all of the other artificial intelligence to focus on, on uh, entities. But even something like Interlinks, which is using the, the Google natural language processor, will go out and pull, up, pull in even more uh, entities. It's amazing how, how you know, it's, it's just competing. I'm, I'm not going to say competing. It's just a different way to approach the entity and how they create the relationships. So we have to remember, Bert trained on Wikipedia. And so creating those relationships is, is essential, especially through, through schema. And how, how, well, how do you do that? Well, InLinks is a fantastic tool. Guys, if, 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 uh, if you have the chance, donate and come listen to Dixon talk about entities during, during the webinar and how content can be, I'm not, it's, it's unstructured data. Of course, it's always going to stay unstructured data, but it can be kind of structured in a way so that you're focusing the entities and presenting the entities like Jordan showed in Postal Live how you can focus the entity in such a way that you present it to the bot so that you get even more love than you possibly could if you didn't do it. I mean, join in and, 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 you know, uh, you get a call with Dixon. He'll, he'll talk to you personally and he'll show you how to use his tool, how to use the software. And it's just a, a fantastic way to focus your content with entities. We have a, a, a writer who we trained on that, who, on, on, on uh, not phrase, but in links and surfer and, and just the different artificial intelligence tools so that it's, it's just hyper-focused on the entity, man. Good stuff.